Ciao, I am Nick Stellino and I have selected for you two great recipes, comfort food. As a matter of fact, when the weather turns cold, this is exactly what you will want to make for your family and friends. Today, we'll make butternut squash soup with a confit of pepper asparagus and spicy sausage, followed by pea soup with a confit of peppers and shrimp. Please, join me in the kitchen. I'm shopping for my favorite ingredient for the soup I want to demonstrate for you. This is a kind of winter squash, but it's not my favorite winter squash. My favorite winter squash is butternut squash. Butternut squash, the Latin name of which is cucurbita moscata. Try to say that fast, ten times. Even I cannot do that. One of the great things that I love about it is it's very easy to cook. It has a flavor that's rich, dense. If we were, for example, to cut this, the inside of it would be orange. And the riper it gets, the more deep orange it gets. But it's not just the color that I like. It's not just the flavor that I like. Also, what it does have is an enormous flexibility on how you can actually use it in the kitchen. You can roast it, you can saute it, you can make the soup, as I will show you. But it's the health benefit that this particular uh, vegetable does have. What I love about it is, first and foremost, an enormous amount of antioxidant, which are great for you. This B6, potassium. Unbeknownst to me, as I was uh, studying onto it, I discovered that a cup of this, uh, taken on a daily basis, is your whole allowance of vitamin C. The thing that I love the most about it is how it responds with a unique yield of flavor to the different type of cooking that you do. If you were to experiment with this, uh, one of the things that I propose is try different techniques. If you roast it, it will taste a certain way. If you saute it, it will taste a different way. If you cook it in the form of a soup with a sofrito underneath, and by the way, when I say sofrito, I mean a nice combination of onion, celery, carrots, which is at the base of every soup that we make, it will pick up a different type of, uh, of flavor. It's the amazing dexterity that this particular vegetable has to respond to the different type of cooking and the yield that it brings back that I truly adore. Now, let's talk about storage. Most people buy this and they put it in the refrigerator. This is not something that you would want to do. When you buy this, keep it in a cool space, very well ventilated. And in this present form, uncut, it will stay nice and edible all the way for about three months. If you should uh, uh, find yourself needing a piece of it and cutting it, then you need to cover it with a little bit of plastic, put it inside the refrigerator, but at that point, you have no more than a week. The seeds on the inside are not edible. I would suggest that once you cut it open, get rid of the seeds, also because of the first one to spoil. And then enjoy it in different techniques. I'm gonna take this with me to the kitchen, and I'm gonna show you step by step on how to make the most luxurious soup you've ever seen. Follow me in the kitchen. Butternut squash soup. I love that accent I have, with uh, a confit of spicy sausage and peppers. Now, this is the butternut squash in its original form. When you see it at the supermarket, what we've done, we cut it, we peeled it, and we have diced it exactly like this. If you're lucky enough at your supermarket to find this already diced, and many supermarkets across the country do have it, do buy it. It saves you a ton of work. This soup, to me, is something that reminds me of comfort. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who I made it for, and what did she say? She said... Uh, or it reminds me of a romantic walk through the countryside of Tuscany. And uh, I kind of like it, in spite of the fact that I'm Sicilian. First and foremost, we start with some extra virgin olive oil. In the making of the soup, I want to treat this soup as something elegant. You have to realize that for the longest time, myself, I've always thought of soup as, uh, how could I say, something boring. You know, I don't look at soup and say, oh, mama, I'm going to have a soup. Soup to me is soup. When I think of soup, it's minestrone. When I was a little boy, my mom used to make soup for us because we had to eat uh, vegetables. And to me, it meant that that day we had no pasta. It made me very sad. Later on, I discovered through the passion that I have for making sauces, the soup can be just as exciting as a sauce. You just have to think of creating a soup in the same flow, in the same manner in which you create a sauce. I'm gonna walk you through it, I'll show you how to assemble it together, and you will feel the same excitement that I do as we get this going. So, in the olive oil that is now cooking, we add a little bit of carrots, together with the carrots, also a little bit of celery. One point that I want to make, that you really need to kind of grasp is, it doesn't matter to make these cuts too elegant. Uh, these cuts are called in French paysan, which means like the farmer makes it. Nothing offensive about it. Truly, what that means is that ultimately, this will braise in for a long, long time. And as it braises for a long time, it will become nice and soft. 
each one of them right now is bringing out the flavor of what truly creates the base. This is called il triunvirato, also known as il soffrito. These three ingredients are at the base of everything that we do. We want to stir them about as the heat is starting to build up. I don't want you to start with a super hot pan. I don't want to braise them. I don't want to burn them. I don't want to mark them. I don't want to caramelize. I want to come to the flavor together. It's like they're taking a walk, they're getting to be friends, they're getting to know each other. As they do that, we start to add other aspects of what makes this soup very interesting. The first thing is red pepper flakes. This, we gotta put it in. A little bit of heat, fantastic. You can put dry spices of anything that you want. I like thyme. You can even use oregano. I find that the thyme is much more interesting. It brings out, and I find that, by the way, dry thyme is even more flavorful than fresh thyme. I know that a lot of you will not disagree with me, but that's how I feel. Sage is the other thing. A whole leaf of sage or pieces of sage, just put it in there. Allow for this to come out. The sage is to me something sacred. Immediately makes me think of fall, you know, that, that, that the comparison to a walk to the countryside of Tuscany, I, I think is ideal. I, I'm gonna have to call Bridget and tell her that she really connected with this perfectly well. The other ingredient is something that we need to pay attention to. Garlic is essential. Garlic, in spite of the fact that it's a southern the ingredient, mostly uh, in the southern part of Italy, especially in Sicily, is something that needs to be handled in a certain fashion. What we have done, and you'll see exactly what I mean, as I add a thick cut garlic. People are concerned about the thick cut garlic. They feel that ultimately it's gonna be very difficult to digest. They're gonna have problems biting into it. Remember, we're gonna cook this for a long, long, long time. It's gonna be brazing through. And once we get to the point of 40 minutes of cooking, in the liquid that we're going to be adding, the garlic is going to be soft pulp. Now, brandy, you can use sherry if you don't have brandy handy, but I like to put a nice little deglaze at this point. Crank up the heat a little bit, just so that we make this evaporate. Always be careful because when you add high alcohol spirits like this, they could flame up. As it happened to me before, <laughs> sometime you have to talk to my wife. She will tell you about the misadventures in the Stellino household, and a few of those do involve flaming up in the pan. Next thing you want to do is uh, to add the butternut squash that we have cut in cubes exactly like this. And the next thing that you want to do is to add chicken stock. I prefer chicken stock. I find the chicken stock in the making of a soup has a much mellower flow, something that I truly come to love and enjoy. Bring this to a boil. Once it reaches to a boil, reduce the heat to a simmer and let it simmer for about 45 minutes. Well, as you can see, it's reduced down to exactly the consistency that we want. Now what we need to do is to process it down to a smooth finish. And here is my little friend, <laughs> Immersion Blender. I love this. Check this out. Turn it on. There you go. This thing is very powerful. Do not be careless because it does a job that you will absolutely adore. Look at that. You want to do this for a few minutes until you get it down to the smooth consistency. You will come to love this piece of equipment. Now, once this is done, let me show you what it looks like exactly, because I want you to kind of lock up visually the consistency that we're going after. And here we have the soup that we have smoothed all the way through. We cooked it, and then we reduce it just for a couple of extra minutes. Look at this. Nice and pulpy, exactly the way in which it's supposed to be. Take a little taste. Mmm, I am good. The next thing I want to show you is how to make the confit. The confit is made with a spicy sausage, which is a dry sausage. You can use linguica. You can use chorizo. You can use any type of sausage that you want. What we want to do is to bring out a flavor that just dances and uh, put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in the pan. This confit to me was an idea because I was thinking the soup is great, but how about putting something into the soup that just makes everything dance, makes everything fly. So what I like to do is while the pan is getting hot, I like to add the spicy sausage. Even Italian sausage would work, by the way. I just discovered the sausage lately. It's not part of my tradition, but it has a flavor to it, something that really elevates the food to the next level. The next thing I want you to see is how I cut the ingredients. This is very important. You need to look at it because otherwise it might change the way in which it does. The uh, asparagus, very small rounds, as you can see. Even the florets of the asparagus cut very little. We did not parboil this. These are in the original form. The peppers, 
the onions. What I try to do is to have everything cut almost the same. I always tell you not to use chopped garlic. In this particular case, I like to have chopped garlic and chop very, very fine. It will be the last addition that we make to the dish. And for the fact that it will be the last addition, the heat that's retained by the ingredients will ultimately firm up the cooking of the garlic. And that's exactly where we want to go with that. And then red pepper flakes. Why you say it's spicy already? <laughs> You're dealing with a Sicilian. We like spicy, but don't exaggerate. I mean, come on. Don't make something just for yourself, especially if you have friends at home. Always check with other people if they do mind or they don't mind spicy food, because that could be a problem otherwise. So the next thing that we do, we add the other ingredients. Here we go with the asparagus, the red peppers, a little bit of the white onions. The fact that everything is cooked so fine, so small, really makes it so much easier for us to deal with, and you're going to enjoy that part of it. Look at that. Guarda, guarda che bellezza, eh sì. Let it cook on high heat for a few minutes until you see the asparagus and the onions to wilt down a little bit. Once it gets to the consistency that you like, the next thing that you want to do is add a little bit of brandy. Just a little bit. Una sfumatura. Una sfumatura means just a hint. And here is where things get to be interesting. Once you get to the point in which all the ingredients are now cooked for a few minutes together, the brandy has evaporated all the way through. Here's what I want you to do. Turn off the heat. Mind you, I'm doing it quite quickly at home. You want to do this for a few minutes until everything is cooked together. So the next thing that you want to do at that point is a little bit of cheese, a little bit of butter, and just a little bit of extra garlic. Then, in the heat that's retained in here, just mix everything together. Ay, ay, ay. Let it melt together. This is spectacular. Okay, the soup is ready. The confit is ready. Now, I'm going to show you how to plate it. Now, the plating is very simple, and it's overly exaggerated because me, I like design. Look, when I serve it to myself, this is how I like to do it. Why? It makes me feel good. Let me show you how to do this because I've done this for many parties that I've done for several of my clients and they absolutely adore. What I've done with the soup, I add a little bit of extra stock right before I serve it, brought it to temperature. The reason why I do that is because it pours smoothly. Look at this. It's fabulous just to look at it. Now, the confit that we did before, right before I showed you how. I let the confit cool just a little bit. I want for the butter and the cheese to mix together and to create this beautiful mound right in the middle of it. And there you'll see what I do. And I like to put it right in the middle because once you engage with it and you start picking up these ingredients, the soup, the elements of the confit, all these things that mix together, mmm, forgive me, I had to do that. Now, a secret. This is called truffle oil. It's very expensive but it's worth it. You don't use a whole lot of it. Just a few drops. Look at this. You look at this and you say, hmm, this is Stellino's recipe for butternut squash soup with a confit of peppers, spicy sausages, and asparagus. Is it good? All you have to say is, it's a Stellino signature dish. You know it's good. And there it is. Peas. Most of us get their peas from the frozen section. Don't be discouraged. Frozen peas are fantastic. As a matter of fact, frozen peas, due to modern technology, are picked about two to three hours within the first picking. They're splendid. But there was a time when peas were not something that everybody could afford. As a matter of fact, Elizabeth I of England uh, used to have peas in her diet all the time. She used to import them from uh, Holland. Very expensive ingredient to have. They were considered to be as expensive as caviar. Pea's name in Latin is Pisum sativum. Italians, by the way, invented the petit pois uh, kind of peas. Uh, it's been known, actually proven through historical records, that Caterina de' Medici, when married Henry II in France and went to the king's court, not only brought with her a bunch of Italian chefs and all the techniques and pots and pans, but also several plants of Petit pois, small peas, which as Italians we call piselli novelli. Of course, you talk to a French chef, you get a whole different story. But this is my show. I'm Italian and I get away with it. What do I love about peas? I love the way they taste, I love how they feel, and I love what I can do with it. As a matter of fact, 
I want to show you a fantastic recipe, so follow me in the kitchen because I have something great to show you. Peas. This is the main actor in this drama that we call pea soup with a confit of pepper and shrimp. Bet you you never heard of that before. To tell you the truth, it's nothing that you get every day. I like pea soup, but I always think soups, as always, are boring until I came up with this idea. I to make this pea soup and build it together like I like to build a sauce. I told you the story before. Well, in this case, we start with a little bit of uh, olive oil that we put right here in the pan, and then we move, and once again, we start building this exactly as if it was a sauce. What does that mean? First and foremost, we go with the onions into the pan. Remember, you do not want to have the pan to be too hot. You do not want to scorch the veggies that we put them in there. Rather, we want to caress them with a little bit of heat. So we just added the celery and the carrots. In this case, you notice that I still maintain the same style of paisan, very simple, informal, different shapes. Ultimately, these ingredients, together with the broth that we will add later on and the peas, will let them simmer for a long time. And when we're done with the soup, when we process it, we'll just have them into a pulp. So the even uh, cut of the ingredients is not that important in this case. It makes it a lot easier for you. It makes you relax. It lets you flow with it. Um, you have to think about the fact that everything that we do kind of builds up a layer of flavor. And this layer of flavor is something of extreme importance because it permits us to bring this from a soup-like character more to a sauce-like character, which is what I love. So at this point, one of the things that I like to do is to add some red pepper flakes. Red pepper flakes are a fantastic way to have a uniform addition of heat. Also, a little bit of thyme. Thyme has become, for me, one of my favorite spices. I love the aroma. They really release this in the kitchen when you're using it. Stir this about just so that everything gets in together. Mm. I'm so sorry we do not have a aroma flavor yet going through the lenses of the camera because you will be totally enthralled by it. This, however, what I'm adding next is the same story, garlic cut thick. Uh, trust me, I tried this before with chopped garlic, but I find that when we add chopped garlic to some recipes like this that we want to cook for a long time, the garlic sometimes gets to the bottom of the pan, and because of the fact that the volume has been reduced so enormously, it might have a tendency to burn. Burned garlic is very difficult to digest. Also, it does impart a most unpleasant flavor to anything. Think of garlic as a gentle soul that you have to coax out and bring into its flow. Let's go back to our peas. A lot of people are concerned. Frozen peas, fresh peas, fresh is always the best. Nothing beats fresh. But frozen peas makes a great alternative. As a matter of fact, I want to go openly on television and confess to everybody that I do use frozen peas when I cannot get a hold of fresh peas. But before I actually add the peas, you got me so excited, I almost forgot the ingredient. In my hand, I have brandy. You can use brandy, you can use sherry. I've also used some time marsala wine. And if I don't have any of this, even something as basic as white wine will do for you. If you choose white wine, go with something that might be on the sweet side, like Gewurzemin or Chenin Blanc. There you are. Now, when you add the brandy like this, be always very careful of the flaming possibilities of it because we're dealing with very high heat. Good. I'm going to reduce this down to a glaze. Once it reaches a glaze and it's reduced completely, then we do add our peas. And this is the part that I love the most. The color of the peas is wonderful in the background of everything. It really gives you a very clear sense that we're moving in the right direction. Mix everything together and already they look beautiful. As a matter of fact, if you wanted to at this point, you could put everything into a baking dish, put it in an oven, preheat it at 500 degrees, and you would have the most fabulous melange of roasted veggies. There, I just gave you a free recipe. How do you like that? You come from one, you get two. I know, I'm good that way. Next thing we add is chicken stock. I prefer chicken stock. If you do not want to have any chicken stock or beef stock, even vegetable stock, would be fantastic. Bring this to a boil. Once it reaches a boil, then I want you to reduce the heat and I want you to simmer for about 45 minutes. Now, we have let this reduce to the proper consistency. As you can see, the volume is much lower. At this point, we want to use our immersion blender. I love this machine because it really, it just does it for me. It makes me feel super. Watch what happens. I put it on the inside and look how quickly it changes. Now, it will take you a couple of moments. Well, no moments, a couple of minutes to get this done right. But once you do this, you will bring this down to the perfect consistency. What is it supposed to look like instead of making you wait all this time? Follow me. I have here what I refer to as the perfect consistency. And this is the pea soup that I like. Let me taste it. Mmm, fantastic. I love it. You could serve it like this, but not at a Stellino household. You say, why not? I like elegant, smooth, flowing things. 
One last step that I want you to consider is the straining of the soup. Be aware of one thing. Once you strain the soup, it will actually force you to lose almost a third of the volume. I'll give you a sample on this one. You have the strainer right place right through it. I'll move this aside. Now, watch what happens. This is what you need, a spatula. The spatula allows you to push the pieces through. I did this for the first time with my nephew Andrew. That's now taking a passion of cooking with me in the kitchen. And you can see the liquid going down and most of the pulp being left behind. This pulp, there's nothing wrong with it. It's fantastic. But what you're left with underneath, in my opinion, has such a luxurious, silky-like feeling that is unbelievable. So we'll put this aside. Once you strain it all, what I want you to do is to cook it on a heat and just reduce it a little bit more to give it the kind of thickness that you want. Now, let's look at the ingredients that make the confit, because this confit is not the same as before. No, 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 this is different. What we're going to mix here is chopped shrimp, together with chopped pork bacon, together with peppers that we cut very finely. It takes place in a quick moment. One of the things that you want to be concerned about is to cook fast and quick because this thing will go from cook to burn quite quickly. Pay attention to what you do. Do not get distracted. First addition, bacon, chopped bacon that we put right in here. Remember, put a little bit because the bacon will release a great deal of its own juices. Then chopped shrimp. I love the shrimp addition. Bacon and shrimp is one of those combos which I discovered by mistake and it's just fantastic. A little bit of the yellow peppers, then we go with the red peppers. You can choose any combination of colors that you want. Even green, not a problem. The onion, finely chopped as well. And then, at this point, a little bit of the chopped garlic. This will cook in no time at all. You'll see the shrimp cooking before your eyes, moving from white to red. One of the things that I tell everybody is to make sure that when you do this, to spread it around and have high heat underneath the pan to get the look, the feel, the taste of everything that you have exactly where you want it. Just a little bit of salt at the very end to make sure that all the flavors are amalgamated with flavor. A little splash of brandy. Let the flame die down. The last thing that we need to do is the addition of butter. And at this point, what I want you to do is to completely turn off the heat underneath. Together with the butter, just a touch of Parmesan cheese and let all the ingredients mix together. So, we have the soup ready, which we strained already. The confit is ready here. All that we have left to do is to assemble the dish, and that in itself is a wonderful artsy preparation. Let me show you how. Plating this is a work of art. First, let me make sure that the taste is exactly what I like it. Mmm. Fantastic, fantastic, just a perfect flavoring. So here we go into our bowl. There you are. And now we go with the topping. And the topping is what I love the most. There you are. Every bite that you will take, every spoonful of this, you will have a little bit of the confit coming together with the soup underneath. And this is the combination that makes it. You might say to yourself, this is a masterpiece. And I'll simply say, no, this is simply pea soup with a confit of peppers and shrimp. And then the last touch, a little bit of truffle oil going all the way around to make this even more real. My gosh, it's beautiful. But of course, it's my recipe. And uh, there it is. Thank you for joining me. It was a pleasure to share with you these wonderful recipes. A wonderful butternut squash soup with a confit of spicy sausages and asparagus. And then pea soup with a confit of bacon and shrimp. Hope you'll share this with your family and friends and I hope that you will use these to turn your home into your favorite restaurant. Until next time, ciao. I love sausages. What I love about sausages is the way they taste. And I love to come here to my favorite butcher because he makes it with love. This is an old family recipe that's been in the family for many, many years. He makes all sorts of sausages, anywhere from kielbasa, a chorizo, Italian style sausages. And by the way, you should be aware of the fact that just about any Italian style sausage that you find anywhere in the country is based on a Sicilian recipe. Us Sicilians like to feel that way. Why is it so? Fennel seed. Fennel seed is what makes the sweet sausage. Difference between sweet sausage and hot sausage 
is the addition of peperoncino rosso, red pepper flakes that gives it a little bit of fire. You also need to have a good amount of fat in a sausage to make sure that when the sausage cooks, it does not dry out. Uh, pork, obviously, is the meat of choice, but or the shoulder is what they're used. These sausages are fantastic. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna get them all wrapped up and take it with me to the kitchen to create something special for you.